Hey guys, we have a special show for you guys today with a special guest here on Talk Shit Sports. Uh, we've got uh, a co-worker of mine, good friend of mine, and the first Mexican-born player in the NFL, Rolando Cantu. Roli, thank you for being here with us today. It, it really is an honor to have you with us and, you know, just to have fun, you know, uh, post-Super uh, Bowl. Here Absolutely. with Angel, here with Angel, Angel uh, Olvera, Jimmy Weed, Jaime Mota. Well, we you call, know. Rolando, we call him Jimmy Weed on this show. You know, I know you know him as Jaime. I, I heard it already. No, si, sí, claro. It's the, uh, yeah, thank you guys. <laughs> Thanks, Jaime. Thanks, Angel, for, for the invite, man. It's It's been a crazy season. Uh, Jaime and I just finished our NFL little season also with uh, the Thursday night footballs during the regular season. So we're coming off fresh off uh, off many different uh, projects. But, uh, man, appreciate the invite, guys. Thank you for having me. Now we appreciate you being on the show with us, uh, Rolando, because, you know, growing up as a kid here in L.A., you know, football is a big deal, you know, and, and, and it was, it's a big deal and we all play football, but we don't see too many Latinos really go into the NFL. And mainly it's, it's just kickers, yeah, you know, but for the they're, most they're, part. But they were like the good soccer players. Then they become the kickers, right? It's changing, man. Angel, I think it's changing. I, I played, uh, I was fortunate enough to play uh, my schooling. I did it in South Texas, McAllen, Texas, so like six miles from the Mexican border. And uh, so my schooling was always in the States. I took a scholarship to go to Tec de Monterrey, uh, which is a, a private school in, in, in Mexico. And then the way I got in was was through the opportunities with NFL Europe when, hey, you know what, we're scouting Mexican players and and you, who, who wants to come pretty much who's on the radar, right? So you're right. Sometimes I played high school level. And I mean, you guys are from Southern California. There's a lot more exposure where you guys are from. But the district I played in, I'll be honest with you, in the four years I lettered varsity, I probably saw one college scout come down to South Texas. And by Angel, by when I say Jaime, South Texas, I'm not saying San Antonio. I'm saying four hours <laughs> south of San Antonio, right? Yeah. Right that, on, that the, south. on the south. That's south. So, um, yeah, you're right, man. I think uh, slowly but surely we see the Garzas and the Romos and the, and the uh, Quique Alonso's and, and the new generation of, of Latinos that are that are going to division one schools at the end of the day, we have to get our players or kids motivated to, to the next level, which I think is going to be a free education. Um, and, and hopefully one day we have a lot more Latinos playing in the NFL and professional sports as well. well yeah. Roli, uh, how did you get to the NFL then? You know, for, for the people that don't know, uh, you know, your path wasn't, you know, a straight line into the NFL. <laughs> no, my, my path is like, is like literally, I think there's your chances of being, in the U.S. playing Division One football and going into an NFL roster is like a 2% chance. Uh, coming from Mexico, it's like a 0% chance. I went from from playing McAllen High School, which is 5A, big, big school in Texas. We never did much because, you know, once we got to the district level and then a little bit more into the playoffs, we would get the San Antonio schools, the Dallas schools, and those guys were, were powerhouses, man. I mean, we couldn't compete literally. But um, I, I took a scholarship in Monterrey because – that's where my family's from. That's where I'm from. And and I used to watch the Borreo Salvajes uh, practice when I was little. And, and I just kind of knew that I would always have an opportunity there. And Coach Frank Gonzalez, native from Laredo, Texas, been in Monterrey all his life. Uh, great coach. He actually was the one that recruited me. So I had more attention from the Mexican universities and the U.S. Uh, universities. And I did have, like, Ranger Junior College and Blend Junior College. That's where Cam Newton played, by the way, for his first year in, in college. And and it got to the point where I knew it was a. I mean, you you, you grab an education from Tecno Monterrey, and you're pretty much you know you have a job guaranteed in Mexico. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna go back. Um, and and of course I had a lot of childhood friends there in Monterrey. But once I started playing at Tecno Monterrey, and I and I started my my rookie year as as a left tackle. I used to play tackle in, in college. Uh, I knew that I I could do a little bit more, Jaime. To be honest with you, because I was dominating the Mexican league, La Unefa. And uh, I said, I have to I have to get back to the U.S. And in 2001, um, I went as an exchange student to Texas A&M Kingsville. That's where Robert Garza, 14 year letterman, uh, 14 year veteran from the NFL. Mi compadre, hey, Robert, uh, he played, man. So I knew that Garza being from the Valley, the same area where I grew up in and played high school ball. I said, hey, you know what? If Garza did it, I, I can get into the program. Right. So I went up there. Did a summer, uh, put two classes in each, each summer session, and and when it came to the, to 
to the spot where, hey, well, where's my scholarship? Because I beat out the guy that was there, the starter. I beat him out. And the guy, the coach was, um, his name's Coach Hayes. He's like, hey, so where'd you, where'd you, where do you play? Where, what high school? I said, I played at Mackay a year, two years ago. I now play in Mexico. He's like, no, you don't play in Mexico. You know, you, you, you're a redshirt freshman. I said, hey, that's fine as long as I get a, a full ride, right? Because I'm getting, I'm going to the Harvard of Mexico on a free, on a, on a free scholarship. Free ride. So I have to, I have to, you know, at least get that. He's like, well, we, let's talk about um, loans and all that. So I didn't have a really good shot of staying there. Uh, I decided to go back to Tecto Monterrey and and enter my junior uh, season. I, I I did not play my 2001 season. I wasn't eligible because I missed the semester because I was at A and M, right? So uh, when once I came back, there was a lot of rumors. Coach Frank, at that point, uh, my coach in Mexico, my head coach Angel, had already gone to two training camps with Andy Reid and the Philadelphia Eagles. He was their interim uh, offensive line coach and uh, also did quality control one year. So he came back. Guys, and, and pretty much told me, you know what, Ro? I mean, Rolly, you're you're the same size, man. You 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 move faster. We got to get you in the weight room. Let's let's start putting that man on the moon. And and Coach Frank Gonzalez actually was the one who, who motivated me back then to kind of, you know, before everybody would wake up at 5 a.m. to catch a lift in. I was already, I mean, I had already done a lift starting at 4 a.m. Right. So it, it it took a lot of a lot of dedication. Dedication that's really hard to explain, you know, in, in in to anybody, even to my wife. My wife doesn't know the 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 dedication, the limits I had to go through in order for me to make it to the NFL. But eventually, I got my shot uh, to NFL Europe. And once I I took my first you know pass set as a guard against a three year veteran uh, from the Chiefs, uh, and I, I I literally stopped him on his tracks. I said, you know what, that I I ain't going nowhere, Papa. I'm going to play in the league. So I, I started for the Berlin Thunder. We won the World Bowl that year. And Dennis Greed, God rest his soul, the Pazis Kantemi coach, he was the one that gave me a shot, man. So I've been very fortunate to to land with Arizona. I was here for 2004, practice squad. 05, I, de- I, I debuted against uh, the Colts, Peyton Manning and the Colts. And then in 06, man, I tore my knee on my right knee, completely shattered, you know, uh, my knee. And, and it was hard to get back into that rehab and – and that's pretty much my my career. I, it was a short career, uh, but I mean, blessed because I still work for the team that gave me a shot as a player. So I, I cannot complain there. My odds coming from Mexico, to your point, Jaime, were pretty much, you know, 0.0, I guess even 1%, you would call it. But um, we're able to open door. Uh, a lot more of my college teammates after I came on board, they, they made it to practice squad, the Broncos, uh, the Chiefs, um, the, the Raiders and so um, I guess um, it's still it's still part of our Mexican history our Mexican college these have been playing for over 100 years in Mexico so now they're now we have Isaac Alarcón who's with the Cowboys right so right. kid I, I I admire a lot that I've been able to work with for the past four years uh, back at, at Tech in, in Monterrey and and uh, so we've been plugging away man I think you know this this football journey has literally changed my life I I consume football 24 7 and and obviously, being played it at, at at a high level, I think you know it 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 gives us a a unique perspective once we're in it, right? So um, yeah, that's pretty much my story. Sums it up in 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 two three minutes. But um, yeah, man, I, I've been blessed. Nothing but 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 good things coming from playing sports and being dedicated and having good grades and 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 doing all the 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 right stuff on the field and off the field in order to us for us to have this opportunity. It's pretty amazing because. Um... You know, I don't know, hundreds of millions of people watch Super Bowl, you know, they watch yes. the NFL. I don't know how many, how hundreds of millions. And to be able to do that, Orlando, is pretty amazing because, but people don't understand, when you grow up in South Texas or in L.A. in the barrio, there's the slim chances of you even, you know, getting to the NFL or doing the wrong thing or getting caught ball with gangs or stuff like that. They don't realize that. But also, a lot of uh, parents, when the parent, your parents come from Mexico to U.S., they don't understand the sports. They're like, go to work. Like, what do you? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna put you. I'm gonna go like put me in construction right away. Not forget going to play sports. Go go to work, right? So I mean, how it's is that? funny, Angel, because do you mention that? Because in my family, I'm the youngest of seven. All my brothers and sisters, uh, with the help of my parents, both parents, my 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 dad was a lifetime butcher, and my mom, you know, she did she did uh, she worked from the house. My dad, my mom sold food and and she worked uh, housemaid jobs and and all that kind of stuff. They, they put everybody through college. I mean, they, they did they, just where they work, right? So 
when I started playing uh, sports, organized sports in, in junior high and stuff, I was the only one that played because everybody else had that mentality that you're talking about right now. My oldest sister went to work and then she went to college and then, you know, they would combo that work and school, work and school. And it, it triggered down, you know, the chain. Right. So when it got to me, I mean, I, I was I, I knew I could play sports because I played baseball and I played uh basketball and football and, and I put a, my first pads on to the age of 13 14 so I knew I could play you know sports so when I started going into sports at school my mom would tell me mijito te vas a lastimar you're gonna get hurt <laughs> oh, oh, you're gonna break your arm right things that we hear every single time just no. the protection, the protection <laughs> of, of a Latino parent right so um at that point, obviously, but you're you're 12, 13 years old. You're not, you don't even want to listen to this because you would just want to be part of of the school activity, the school team, right? So, it happens to a lot. It still happens to a lot of our culture in our culture. And and I think my mom, once I got that scholarship to take the Monterrey, she was like, okay. I mean, not that they wouldn't go watch me play. They would go watch me every single game. And 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 obviously in college they would they would go they would travel every weekend and make the two hour drive uh, down south and, and and catch me, you know, playing on the field. So. Yeah, man, it, it, it comes from from your house, and you're right. Uh, we didn't grow up in the best neighborhood in in, in South Texas in McAllen, but um, yeah, man, a block away was everything you don't you don't want in your life. And and mom was always strict, and dad was always strict with work ethic. Man, I had we had to wake up early, you know, go to go to work, and, and when you had to help out the family, you had to help out the family, and it was it was a constant monitoring. So now when yeah. ah, leave, leave the kids alone, let them, let them grow up. Que hagan lo que quieran, que decidan. Have them decide hey, we're going in the wrong direction, man. Seriously. My parents were always involved in, in, in our, in our lives. And, and um, so I think that kind of shaped us the way we were brought up and we're just hungry angel. To be honest with you, we're hungry. I was hungry since, since the age of 12, man. I think that's, we didn't have much. I mean, we had, my parents worked. We didn't. We didn't really. Never. We hardly ever went out to eat. I mean, it was one of those things where you know we. I remember being in South Texas, and I remember when the when the Big Macs were eighty eight cents back then. You yeah. Know, South Texas, Papa Iba. I mean, here's a twenty dollar bill. Go buy twenty, and we would just divide them up into the whole family. And my mom would make you know the French fries at home. I remember those things. And those those are things that that I tell my girls now, and they're like, they're like, really? Like, yeah. That, I mean, that's. That's how we were brought up. And I think that's that's in our DNA. And and to be honest with you, um, it, it's tough. These these decisions these kids, high schoolers make often impact what what goes on in the next five or six years of their life. So I think most definitely the communication. Every time I'm in front, Angel and Jaime, in front of a group in one of my kids' camps in Mexico or in South Texas, I'm always pushing, you know, education. I'm always pushing doing the right things on the field and making better choices, man. Because at the end of the day, we all had our choices. And uh, and I'm I'm happy we chose right. Well, obviously, um, you know, you being the the lead analyst for for Fox Deportes for our our NFL coverage, we got to, you know, have an, an incredible season. Uh, we do Thursday night football. Um, you know, it, it's amazing what uh, what Rolando is able to do uh, along with uh, Adrian Garcia Marquez, who's our play by play guy. Um, but you know, getting back to the Super Bowl, you know, why, why do we even consider going against Tom Brady nowadays? <laughs> Porque, oh my God, I mean, the, the guy, what he, what he does is, is incredible. You know, I, I'm going to throw a little, a, a little trash at him, uh, but what did you think overall, Rolly, of the Super Bowl? I have, I have too many ties to the Bucs, man. I think, you know, being... Being here with the, my Cardinals when Bruce Arians was here, you know, seeing Byron Leftwich take that interim, you know, training camp uh, position and develop and see him develop into a great offensive coordinator and Todd Bowles and and all those guys, Cody Graham, those guys, Larry Foote was our player and then became a, an assistant over here with the Cardinals. So for me, it was it was more about the system Tom Brady was going to be. And I knew Coach Bruce Arians was licking his chops, man. Once he had the opportunity, him and Jason Light. Jason Light was one of our executives over here with the Cardinals for a lo for a long time. Uh, he came from the Patriots, so I knew there was a connection there, you know, with Brady and him. And once he took that GM spot in in Tampa, you could tell something was 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 really cooking. I like I like it. I to be honest with you, I was one of the guys that was that was kind of rooting for him 
at the start, I said, it's going to be tough, man, because terminology in the NFL, it doesn't matter if you're 20 years in, it, it changes. And just that adaptation, and maybe it wasn't even Brady. It was going to be the rest of the guys adapting to Brady. Right. Wanted the things to be done and executed on the field. But I knew Bruce, and Bruce Darius is a quarterback whisperer. That's why sometimes when they say, hi, man, Oh, yeah, what happened to Jameis Winston? Dude, if, if Bruce Arians cut you and you were the quarterback, that means you – I mean, that's that, – that's got a problem. That's how wrecked you are in the NFL. In my He's the problem view, for the New Orleans Saints now. In my point of view, right? Because, you know, I think I think once they just started adapting and starting game planning, and you could see they started slow. We had a couple of the games early in, in yeah. Thursday night, and it was like, okay, these guys either – Chicle les pega or, or these guys are going, going all the way, right? So – once they fix their problems, once their defense, I think their defense will yeah. come out at the end, you know, kind of matching the intensity on the offensive side, the play calling, the execution. You, you can't really bet. I mean, this guy's 43 years old, dude. He's, to be honest with you, he already said he be, he's coming back next year and he's, he's going to make another run for it. And I believe him, Jaime. I believe him. To be honest with you, I know it, it, it's, it's one of those, those long shots, but if he did it from one year to the next with a different team, with 52 other guys that bought in, man, I mean, there's something magical. And the, Brady's just doing it right, man. You, I, I just can tell from a former player, he's he's just doing it right. I mean, his his mindset, his leadership is key. I mean, he's, yeah, he's attracting absolutely. people. He, re- he yeah. absolutely, his leadership skills are, are incredible. Uh, you know, I, I've bet against Brady my entire life, I think. Ever since I can remember, Dude, it's because you know, you're a I, dolphin I, fan. It's because you're because I'm a dolphin fan. fan. I, you know, and and I made a bet here with uh, with Angel that if the Bucks won, I reluctantly picked the Bucks on our show here uh, last week, saying that you know they were going to win. Reluctantly though, and so I said if the Bucks win, I'll wear something Brady or Bucks. Obviously, it it, it hurts me that I would have to wear anything TB12, but I'll go the next best route. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a man of my word, and I, I, I get to put this on and, and keep it on for a little I, bit. I should have made you get a TB12 tramp stamp. But you know, we should have bet that for you, a tattoo. <laughs> oh, oh. God, that would have been horrible. I don't know. I don't know if I would have been able to do that. <laughs> you probably would, In the beginning of the playoffs, you probably would have took that bet. Not, not, you know, not the at the beginning, before. heck yeah. <laughs> at the beginning, heck yeah. But oh my god, I mean, what what they did? It, it was basically, you know, you know what was funny? We we saw even this morning. I think I, I sent it to you on WhatsApp, uh, also on the NFLeros account. Somebody posted like a TikTok of you know a quarterback just running all over the place, like a replay of the and, and, and yeah. like the replays, you know, and, and and the ball hitting the guys on the helmet, like. You know, going right through their uh, the flags, their hang, their, the, the refs throwing flags at Mahomes. Yeah, it, it's true though. I mean, what Mahomes did too was unbelievable. Even though he he couldn't do much. Oh, some of those passes were ridiculous. Some of the passes were ridiculous. They, they were, and and you know, we, we have to give him credit. And he's a future, and he's going to be there. I'll, I'll be honest with you, and I open up this discussion with you guys. I want to hear your opinion on it. Last year we had we had the knee situation, right? They they kind of you know took care of him for two weeks and then he brought him back slowly and and it worked out, right? This year we had the choke concussion, whatever you want to call it. I mean, he was in the protocol. It was an official concussion, but we all saw the replay when Wilson hit him. He kind yeah. of did little little yeah. you know um, chicken legs or, getting back up. No, no, se le fue el aire, se le fue el aire. So to be honest with you, this year watching them in the Super Bowl, Patrick Mahomes. He was a little off, man. The protection didn't help at all. Rammers and Wiley were off. By the time Shaq Barrett and, and JPP got in the rhythm, they 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 measured him, man. They measured the punch. They measured the pocket. And they were just going after him. And it got to the point. There was one sack, and I can't remember what point of the, of the game it was, but it was like a combo sack. Barrett and JPP at the same oh, time, they just bend them over. They crushed them. Yeah. They crushed them. And you can see his face, man, his, his expression, like, Dude, this really hurt. He got back. He's a little limpy, and I think the turf toe was an issue. To be honest with you, the whole time they just kind of kept it on a down low. He wasn't. He wasn't himself, man. Nine points. You got to give the your hats off to Todd Bowles and his crew and all those guys. What they did, they they executed, man. They executed. This is what you you strive for as a coach in the NFL. You put the game plan. You you wish for like an eighty percent execution, 
And once you get anything above that, you're like, man, this is gravy, dude. I, I look like a genius. Todd Bowl was gonna have was not gonna have, you know, go to he was not gonna this he was he was not gonna let go of this opportunity to go to waste. And I think he really showed what 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 how capable he is in his staff. I mean, this guy was a great co coordinator already, defensive coordinator. He went to the Jets. I mean, we all saw what he did with the Jets, nothing. And it's like the the dark ages, man. You you want to get back to your status. And I think that game really gave it to him. I, I really enjoyed – I'm too bad most guys were like, oh, really, you, you watched the Super Bowl? You liked it? I did. I, I liked the Super Bowl. I liked the way, you know, the Bucks game planned against these guys. The numbers weren't there. I mean, 200 yards, and you're like, okay, that's a normal quarterback in the NFL, right? But this guy, they, they just managed the whole – the whole momentum and, and Brady was behind him. And I think at the end of the day, Patrick Mahomes, I mean, you know, he's going to have his shot again. Eventually. Oh, absolutely. You know, he, absolutely. He, uh, and to be honest with you, Eric bien I mean, he's still there. I mean, obviously I, we don't know if he's going to get another interview here or there, but the head coach's positions in the NFL are filling up. So if they fill up, I I would rather him just stay, you know, and, and continue this, this, uh, this grind and, and this, uh, this relationship with Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, the Bruce Arias is pissed off because these guys didn't get a – they didn't give him an opportunity, Todd Bowles. No, yeah, you're right. And they – Bruce Arias says one more year, right? He's, he, he said one more year will give it. I don't know anything beyond that. But if Bruce Arians leaves next year, I'm sure they'll both interview Todd Bowles and, and Byron Leftwich. So one of those guys – one of those cats is going to get it. I, I I don't see how the team would change directions. But – um. Yeah, you're right. Those guys deserve a shot. And to be honest with you, once you have an, a true opportunity, like once you, once you have a Tom Brady on your roster, you know that you have a shot, right? No. Oh, more than a shot. Absolutely. Don't ever reach this, the, the playoffs. So if you just won Super Bowl 55 under a year where you didn't do – when you, you didn't have summer uh, workouts, you didn't have a training camp, a, a legit training camp, uh, preseason and all that, I mean, why not go for it? Keep your staff intact. You know, pay them a little bit more. There's about seven free agents that you're going to have to tend to. Jason and I just have to do a hell of a job. But then you have the Brady factor, man. Who, hey, if, you, if you're a free agent this year and you're like, you know what, I'm worth, you know, $3, $3 why don't I make one, one and a half and I go to, to Tampa Bay? Let me, let me go help out. Let me go see if I can get into the mix. Because you want the ring. At the end of the day, you want the championship. It, it creates a different status between the players and and at the end of the day i think we should be talking later in the offseason about you know those guys kind of doing it again so it, it's sort of like what the dodgers are doing right trying to buy another ring you know hey, with, with trevor hey, bauer guy, yeah, guy, so, <laughs> hey they were out of it for, for for a while man once you're on top it's hard to stay on top why not hey he's talking about he's talking football over here he's only talking about baseball we shot my dodgers <laughs> You know, when always, you're a kid, always. when I was a kid, there was a, it was a little game you played in school. It's called Big Bang Take Little Bank, right? The Dodgers got the Big Bank and they showed the Padres, hey, you guys want to get some players? We'll get some players too. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I, see, I, I see, Angel, you have a, a Rams helmet up there. No, no, oh, yeah. no, for the Chargers? No, no, no. I don't like the Chargers. No, because, because, because LA. Are you happy with the Stafford move? Absolutely. Uh, 100%. Yeah. Um, the, in LA, growing up in LA, the Chargers were San Diego. And, yes. and, and here, growing up, you either root for the Raiders or Rams. Because the Raiders and Rams didn't have no rivalry. It was like, ah, I'll go for the Rams. will be an NFC team. The Raiders will be my AFC team. And, and then, you know, so you hate the Chargers and the Chiefs and, the, and all those guys. You know? So it's in the 49ers and all them. So that's the reason why, you know, got no love for this. I think, I think uh, the Chargers should go back to San Diego. They're not going to build a fan base here. I, I don't know what they're doing. I mean, seriously, the, the, the stadium is going to be the opposite team when they go to the games over there. But well, watch out, Justin Herbert, man. Well, he's a stud. Yeah, he's he's a, got a themselves deal. a quarterback. But it's he's like it's like the Clippers. They'll never be the LA team. They could win the championship this year, next year, three, four years. They'll never be LA's team. Laker Town over here. True, absolutely. But true. I got to give a shout out, Rondo, to uh, uh, Tom Flores being inducted in the Hall yes, of Fame. Absolutely. Not only the first Latino, but the first minority head coach. Yes, minority. And, and yeah. Much deserved, and and it was about time. It was, yeah, it's been a while now. And we've been talking about this for at least four or five years now consistently. Uh, I, I had the opportunity to, to sit down with Tom Flores last year at, in Miami. We had a, a, an activation for Vox Deportes. And, you know, I asked him maybe about three or four questions. And then I, I sat down and had a coffee with him for about 25 minutes, man. And, um, you know, he's, he's up there in age. Obviously, you know, he was doing his, his walking stick and stuff. But 
just to see the way he carries himself, man, at, at this age, I would have wanted I would have wanted to see him when he was in his prime, man, because this yeah. guy was was ferocious, man. This guy was a natural leader. He was he was a heart and soul of, of, of the Raiders, man. And to be, you know, a player and then mo most players, you know, when they're done, and I'm not saying everybody has it because they don't, but you you think about the coaching opportunity, to be honest with you. You're like, hey, you think at any level, right? Can I go back to high school and coach high school? Can I get into college uh, coaching? Can I be a pro coach? And and Tom Florida just did the transition. I mean, beautifully. I, I think at the end of the day, he's he's one of the guys that a lot of not only the Latino community, but a lot of people, sports fans were pushing for in order for him to get to the Hall of Fame. So I'm happy for the guy, man. Last year, I, I really enjoyed one of the best things I, ha I, I have. Uh, to remember from Super Bowl 54 in Miami is that 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 those 20 minutes I sat down with the legend man uh, uh, Tom Flores uh, out in a, it was a yacht it was you know it was in Miami Bay or, or whatever it's called down there and uh, man it was it was just great because a lot of people were interviewing and once he was done he's kind of sat in the corner and uh, I just gave him like the nod he's like hey come over and you know we had a coffee and we just sat down and talked uh, football and talked Super Bowl back. You know, we talked about, you know, Chiefs and, and, and 49ers. But, um, yeah, man, really happy for him. Yeah, he, he came from a small town like, like we're in McKinney, Texas, like down in McAllen, Texas, out in the Central Valley in yep. California. Uh, another guy that needs to be in the NFL is Jim Plunkett. I don't know what's going on with that. I mean, that's – he's another Latino guy that's not in the, well, in, in the Hall of Fame. And that's a guy that, fame, that yeah. Flores gave, you know, uh, another chance because, remember, Plunkett used to be the quarterback for the 49ers. Uh, and, and what Plunkett was able to do and, and actually, you know, win a Super Bowl and, and get back to, to the top level was with the Raiders under Tom Flores. Right. So, you know, hats off to, to oh, Mr. Flores is... uh, again. And Rolly, I want to go back to the Super Bowl. And, yeah, uh, he's wearing the helmets. Though, th this this is something, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, I'm still wearing this thing. You can't breathe. Um, <laughs> well, you, you should know, have got him, Angel, the, the old school helmet where, where you know, the pirata is, is, oh, is uh, there. And I know. I, I got the cool looking one, at what least. What color is that, Jaime? It kind of looks like the, your, the U uh, color you got there. Or it, it, sort, it sort of does look a little bit like, like this. It's, it's pewter is, is the, official, the official color of, of the helmet. Well, cuter? Cuter? No, uh, it's cuter, cuter, it's cuter, <laughs> chulo. It, no, but, you know, going back, so many flags, you know, for so many penalties for, for Kansas City, I, I, I think twofold. One, yes, uh, the defense got in their head. Um, so some of the offensive uh, mistakes that they made, but the defense as well made a lot of mistakes. But all right, I want to ask you. How many times do we see this against the team that's playing Tom Brady? Is there something there? Porque all, all the flags were being thrown, you know, against the Chiefs. Uh, but every time it seems to be like whoever's playing against Tom Brady is going to get flagged a heck of a lot more. When you play so long, there's a respect from any, everybody, from the field, you know, from the players, from, uh, you know, the refs, it, it's just the way the, the game went. I mean, those were penalties, man. At the end of the day, they were penalties. And let me tell you, let me go back a little bit. I don't know if you guys saw that. Well, for me, it was like the first Super Bowl. I'm, I stay home in the last, you know, 10, 11 years. I'm usually doing something on site, right? So the first guy that came out of the locker room was Ryan Jensen, the center, right? He was the first guy out. And he was way ahead. He was like 15 yards ahead of everybody. I mean, that just showed me that he was ready to go, man. So there was a lot of chirping. There's a, there's a psychological effect, guys, when you play, you know, in Las Trincheras on the line of scrimmage, you have to get in his mind. You have to tell him something. Every play, remind him. Just kind of get if – you, if you just get him a step out of it, that's an advantage that you have, and that's where you, you, you go and you build off of that. You build off the momentum, and I think it started there. And then it just, it just carried over to the second level, and then it carried over to Tyron Matthew, and then it carried over to the, to the cornerbacks. And when they took the shot, they only took that shot. Mike Evans, that 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 hit in the back. I mean, even if it was, it was a hit, maybe I don't know if the ball would have, if he would have had a shot to, to even touch the ball. But dude, it was so evident. It was evident that there was a contact there, so the flag came out automatically. 
that's a big play, man. You're that's a huge play. Big play. It puts you on the spot. It gains us so many yards. And just to kind of when you're when you go on top like that in a football game, especially in the Super Bowl, and you're behind the 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 scoreboard 20 points plus, it's tough, man. Because what's gonna happen? You're gonna as an old lineman, you're gonna have to protect, protect, pass set, pass set. And those guys are gonna go, man. They're gonna pin their ears back and they're just gonna attack you. And they're gonna, even though not every time there's gonna be, you know, that that clear shot to the quarterback, but in the as offensive line, they're gonna switch it up. They're gonna do bull rush you, they're gonna put the rip and swim, they're gonna do crosses, they're gonna do everything in order for you to get tired. And that's what happened at the end of the day when they measured them, when they measured the pass heads, they just came at them. So we be, we all saw be Muslim Patrick Mahomes that was like. Oh my God, we've never seen Patrick Mahomes like this. What happened? Where are the touchdowns? We're, we're nine points, really? And everybody questions that, Jaime. Oh, the penalties. What? There were penalties, right. man. At the end of the day, there were penalties. There were penalties. And you know what? You cannot tell me that, to be honest with you, Terry Matthews, should, <laughs> Terry Matthew, let Brady confront him, bro. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something as a football player. You can talk smack. Y, y, y sabes que? Y siempre va a pasar. I mean, and, and now it's it's more – back then it was more vocal and it was more open and you could do it all the time. Now it's kind of like in between the lips, right, in between your mouthpiece. Yeah, because everybody hears it. Oh, yeah, 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 microphones and, and stuff. And you know what? Oh, yeah, he came back and told them something, bro. Once a quarterback comes back and kind of sizes you up, bro, that's a disrespect, man. But you know what? The defense was watching that. Shaq Barrett, JPP on the side. They were like, oh, my God. Look what our quarterback just did. Jaime, you had to come out and just bully everybody after that. That's what they did, man. There's an effect there. There's a psychological effect. When have we seen we, – we see Brady up and we, throughout his career, the Patriots day. Siempre he was like, ah, oh, you know, he was, come on, let's go. And he was he would regañar a gente on the sideline. And he was – los prendía. This time around, he just had to get in front of Tyron Matthew, which is not just a regular safety. He's one no. of the top safeties in the league, dude. Absolutely. This guy, the honey badger, he's, right. he's he's crazy, dude. He puts on a helmet and he wants to kill you on the field. That's what he does. He's, he attacks you. He's physical. This guy doesn't let go. To see your quarterback do that, man, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, oh, there we go. That's it's it. over. It's well, over. And, and, There's and no easy, way. Easy. There's a psychological effect for everybody that was that was greater than the game right there. Greater than the game. Right, because he he's he gets in his, he's a crazy dude, and yeah. and Brady knows that, and Brady got in his head, and he, Brady smart dude, yeah, smart, oh, he's absolutely. a smart quarterback. Uh, and then yeah. you you you've got Antoine Winfield Jr. You know going up uh, on uh, on the cheetah. <laughs> hey, it was payback, dude. It was just payback. Uh, yeah, it should have been a penalty. It was. He he, he did exaggerate. He like he kind of did the breakdown, and uh, you know he I thought he was a little macarena or something, but she, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> he could have just deuced it up, and he he did the deuce. I think like three seconds more than than what's permitted, right? He made sure. Oh, he, he made, made sure. sure. He knew. He, but he but the sure last but knew. the last game, the Tyreek Hill did a backflip on him. No, yeah. he did a backflip, and and another on another touchdown. That's when he threw up the deuce, you know, uh, like the peace sign, and that's why uh, Winfield Jr. said, you know oh. what. I'm gonna remember that. I thought, I thought uh, he, he got the penalty, but it, it was irrelevant because it was fourth down, right? I mean, it was it was one of yeah, those, it was fourth down. Yeah. It was one of those scenarios where hey, do it, and even the coaches were like high fiving him on the sideline and stuff. <laughs> they like bullied these guys. Todd Bowles called it. We talked about it on the last show. He said the only way they're gonna beat us, we're gonna make Mahomes run the whole game, and he's that's it. You're not gonna get Tyreek Hill. You're not gonna get Kelsey. Well, You're gonna run the whole game. Well, their DBs were playing like 15, 20 yards back. I mean, they were not letting Tyreek Hill be get behind them. They played center field. They you were know, dropping passes. That's what they did. And so, you know, Todd Bowles had a, a, a great scheme. And the fact that it was very hard for the Chiefs to readjust their game plan, you know, I, I think that's what really did them in. Because even though, you know, uh, Tyreek Hill had, what was it, seven catches? Yeah, they were, they, mostly, were they were mostly they were mostly in the fourth quarter when they were trying yeah, to get they were back into it. They, they, they did nothing. I mean, Kelsey dropped the first down, big first down. That that's rare for Kelsey. It, they were in their head. They looked out of it. You saw their eyes. They were like, they're out of it already. There, there, there is this, anybody that tells you that that there's not chirping going on. It hasn't really played at this professional level. There's always there. There's a game plan, man. And 
And as a player, you prep for your battle, for your individual battle. Who's in front of me? Hey, Vito Vea is going to be in front of me. I mean, what's his wife's name? What, what, are, his, what are his kids' name? I mean, you, any information <laughs> is an advantage to you. And if you're one of those guys that likes to talk and, you know, after the play. You know, you that, that was it. I think you hit it. You hit the nail on the head. That's probably what Tyron Matt, Matthew went and, 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 and he told uh, uh, Brady something about Giselle because everybody knows Giselle. Yeah, but it, <laughs> it, it happens, man. You know, you have to be I, – I know for a fact that this, in this era, everything is really sensitive, right? It, wherever, Whatever you talk about uh, on and off the field. So, But it, 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 you, the, the good old days, man, I mean, there was, there was people telling personal stories on, on their spouses, right, on the field. Like, hey, how's this going? Like, if you had a legal case going, I mean, there's a bunch of things, crazy things. And you're, you're coming into the league like, as a rookie. You're like, what, what, just, what does that mean? I mean, what, what just happened, dude? Like, what, what are these guys chirping about? And they would do it. This is before social media, right? And so there's – I know for a fact that, you know, if, if you play in the NFL now and you think that there's no psychological game, I, I think you're you're at a disadvantage because there is we, – we just saw it. Super Bowl 55 was – was a clear example of that because these guys, you know, the chirpiness was there. Uh, the, Ryan Jensen, I mean, this center is just he, – he, it started I, – I think it just kicked off. It, it exploded against the Saints. This dude had like six yeah. pancakes against Alex Alizon, the wall linebacker. I mean, like, if you, Angel, if you get one pancake, I mean, it's like, okay, hey, todo mundo, you know, it's, it's like, all right, dude, like, good job, yeah. right? You get two, it's like – I don't know, it's like scoring a touchdown, man, but you get six or seven – that domination is really something at a different level, and that's what those guys did. Tristan Worth, Donovan Smith, Ali Marpet. That kick, that that kick out, dude. That I mean, they overloaded to the right side with Gronk and Braid, and then you usually, usually, what you do is you block down. They block down, and then they pulled Ali Marpet from the left guard position, one on one against uh, against the cornerback. That's like the ideal position you want to be in when you're when you're going out in space i mean uno uno contra un, contra un corner bro you're gonna you're just gonna it, it must, you don't even have to catch him bro just just kind of get in his way because eventually you'll win and just leonard Fournette just took off on, on the right side man that was like for me when they executed that to perfection i'm like okay these guys have no shot to get him back because they were just so on it they 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 rolled the dice on a, on a game plan that was based on on momentum that was based on 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 the physical aspect and and the Bucks won it, yeah, big time. I mean, when the Chiefs stopped them on the fourth and one, Rojo right there, I thought yeah. I thought they were gonna get momentum. They didn't get nothing. Yeah, I, I right there, that was Angel, a huge I'm like, play. okay, we have a game now. Like this, yeah. these guys are gonna battle it loud. But that was it. That was their one shot, man. That's it. That was it. After that, it was like, man, I mean, oh man, it, you know, it reminded me of like you know, you talk about Rolando about like in your mind. You remember the days when Mike Tyson used to box. And and he he already beat the play, the fighter. The guy was already scared on the other end. Yes, before he got into the I ring. mean, the guy was already like you could see him, and he was like, boom, done. Like if uh, if, you, if, you, if you're a sports, if you're a football fan, not sports. If you're a football fan, and you think that these guys don't, dude, that you get paid to put on a helmet like the one Jaime is wearing, and just go to <laughs> at least get on. It's it, it's like a fight. You have to take it as a fight. And you're right, man. There's there's an aspect where you know you're on top of a dude in a pile and. You know, you're you're chirping away. You're kind of you know staying on them a couple more seconds. Obviously, within the limits, not really within the whistle. But there there is a, a, a true psychological aspect to to being physical. Oh, you know, the guy that the guy that did that, and we saw it in on replays was Indomik and Sue. Uh, you know, he would throw a little elbow here and there, a little extra always. You know, and a lot of people consider Indomik and Sue a dirty player. Um, because he he does go the extra mile, but man, that that does get in your head, and, and you could see it. You could see definitely that he had a, he had a hit. He had a quarterback hit, Jaime, uh, like in the third quarter, where he just loaded up his his paws. Man, he just he's like, okay, I'm gonna, uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna juke me, dude. You're gonna stay in front of me. He broke down, and the ball was. I mean, the ball he released, but he just hit Patrick Mahomes. And he just buried him in the ground. That was like a, a max rep, dude, like in the gym. Just like, boom, vámonos. A ver qué pasa. Patrick woke, got up and was like, oh, my God. I felt that. That's what yeah. you need. And that's what you need in order, in order to win. I, I, I love the Super Bowl. I, I think I had a great time, one, because I was here at the house. And, and two, just to see those guys win it, man. Bruce Arians and, and his crew. 
because I, I mean, I, I met him over here in Arizona and, and that was, a that had always been on, on their wish list. Right. And, and obviously, you know, going into retirement, becoming a broadcaster and then coming back out into the work field and, and, and doing what he's done with, with the bucks is incredible to watch. How is Bruce? Is he a cool guy? You bet, you bet. You bet. Great guy, great guy. I mean, he's... Well, considering I'm not talking about Brady anymore, I'm going to take this thing off. No, I, I heard Bruce is a really cool <laughs> cool dude. I heard Bruce, Bruce Harris is Bruce cool... Bruce is, is legit, Angel. He's he's one of those guys that'll tell you straight up to your face. doesn't matter if you're the Spanish player, player or the starting quarterback. <laughs> if he disagrees with something or if he sees something, he'll call it out. And I think at the end of the day, that's what you want. You don't want, as a player, you don't want the coaches that, that'll butter you up, like tell you everything's good, and on the other side, they'll cut you, right? Bruce Arians is going to tell you, hey, you ain't going to make it today. With your efforts on the field, you're, you're going out today. And, that, and he'll tell you right in the middle of the play. That's it. I mean, you ask him. Yeah, because he, call, he called out Brady during the season. Oh, several <laughs> times. The thing is. He threw him under yeah, the bus call, several he times. He mentioned what happened. He just called out, yeah, the two interceptions. You got to make better decisions. That's it. Play, and people are like, oh, there's a battle, the, you know, the Belichick, yeah. uh, you know, Brady. Now it's Bruce and, and and Brady. That never happened, dude. And he said, you know, we have fun with these things. What happens in, in the locker room this year, especially, I think that's a perfect example. Everybody bought in. Everybody took care of their bodies. Everybody took care of their minds. Everybody took care of the protocols. Man, it was – I was in the NFL protocol. I had to do a COVID test every week. One of my guys in, in, in Aceta Cardenales, he – he did 160 some tests because he tested every single day in order for him to, you know, record and grab B-roll and and kind of be the face when we're not there in the office because numbers were restricted. So, in order for you to have a year where yes, people went on the COVID list and then came back and nothing happened, thank God, and and all that, it, it's it's everything's against you, man. This year, everything was against every single roster, and Bruce Arians just kind of handled it as a champ, man. He's he's one of those guys where. You know, you can see him. There's passion. Whenever he's mad in the field, you can see the redness, man. He's, he's, climbing. he's climbing. Those were one of the things that he had. I mean, he's always had, you know, th those issues with, with being so intense, right? And at the end of the day, you have to, you know, there's there's a point where you have to take care of your body and, and kind of measure those things and weigh whether it's worth it or not. But Bruce Arians is as intense as it gets. He's one of the most respected coaches that I've ever uh, been in contact with at a league level. And uh, I'm just happy for him, man, that he finally got one as a head coach. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I'm happy for him. He looks like a good dude. Yeah. El, tío Bruce. El tío Bruce. El tío Bruce. El tío Bruce. Well, you, you, I, I can't go without, you know, um, making Angel here a, a little bit upset. Uh, now, we had NFL honors, uh, you know, on Saturday night. Some of these guys, you know, uh, I think deserved the, the awards that they got. You don't think they all deserved uh, it? Uh, however, there's one of them. I, I tend to agree after looking at what J.J. Watt posted afterwards. You know, Aaron Donald is a great defensive player. Probably the best defensive player. Right. Uh, but then J.J. Watt put something up, uh, you know, saying, you know, I respect Aaron Donald and this is nothing against A.D. He goes, but my brother, T.J. Watt, was better than him in just about every single category. So I saw what he put up, and it's true. Tackles, 53 for J.J. Watt, 41 for Donald. Sacks, 15 to 13 and a half. Tackles for loss, 23 to 12. Pressures, 55 to 42. QB hits, 41 to 26. The only thing where Aaron Donald beat out T.J. Watt was enforced fumbles. Okay. Four to two. So, did the right guy get the the award for defensive player of the year? Well, half of the half of those sacks were the Cincinnati Bengals. So who cares? <laughs> who cares? Aaron Donald plays in the <laughs> NFC West, bro. NFC West is you can't. Oh, bro, I, I think at the end of the day, we got uh, JJ is going to look out for his brother, of course, right? And he's going to try and pull up, you know, try and put his influence on him. But you know, one plays on the edge, which is TJ. And the other one plays inside, man. And when you play inside and have those numbers, for me, they count double, dude, because you're always on, on, you know, you're always getting double teamed. In order for you to pull off a sack, it's really, it, it, it's remarkable, man. You really have to work at it. And, and Aaron Donald has done it consistently, consistently. I get TJ. He's up and coming. He's younger. He's faster. He's quicker. He's more hungry. And he's going to eventually get there, to be honest with you. But 
I would have to stick Jaime with Aaron Donald, to be honest See? with you, because from a, from a See, two against one here, three technique, you know, two technique, he even does a shade. I mean, it, it's he's always on there. He's so important from a game plan standpoint that you have to put two guys on yeah. him or one three guy and then have somebody just kind of mirror him just in case he wants to go for a different gap and just kind of you have to have that contact at the end it was kind of when we saw when we we broadcasted that the nfc championship uh in in green bay um uh, he was hurt man his hip yeah, hurt. He was hurt. His yeah, he, he wasn't he was kind of just kind of kind of hurt him a little bit and he was wounded he was wounded that's why he didn't finish strong in versus the packers well you could tell i mean you, the injury i guess was really the one that i guess the yeah, the one that he suffered against the Seahawks. No, it was worse than a broken rib, they said, whatever it was. Yeah, it was, it was, it was uh, like a torn cartilage, which is even worse than a broken rib. Well, look, you're hearing from an expert that, that sits on the other lines of Donald's. And, and so, Jaime, you can't talk about what's Watts or whoever you're talking about. <laughs> In Miami Dolphins or whoever, you know. Uh, well, speaking uh, speaking uh, of, you know, Aaron Donald got hurt in that game against Seattle. And, and Rolly... It's interesting that in the last couple of days, um, Russell Wilson came out and said, you know what? I'm getting tired of getting hit. Uh, he, just, he said it today right now. He just announced it right now. Yeah, that, you know, he really is getting tired of, of getting hit. And there have been rumors. Who's this, Hyman? Sorry? Uh, Russell Wilson. Russell, Russell. Yeah. And, and so and the, there have been rumors that he might be traded. Can you imagine? He ain't going anywhere. Is that, is that going to happen? He ain't going anywhere. You, I, I can't see as a sports fan, Russell somewhere else, man. He's, he's been there. He's got, he's got to, they got to fix up his, his protection, man. He's right. He's tired of getting hit. Yeah, you see these quarterbacks. Brady doesn't get hit. Does he get hit? And and Brady, no. I mean, Brady, they they drafted a first rounder. I mean, yes, Tristan Wirth, Iowa. The expectation is he he's gonna fail at one point, right? Not everything's gonna be solid, but this dude just played out, just balled out. So Russell's looking at all these quarterbacks, veteran quarterbacks, right in the league, Angel, and saying like, "Dude, these guys don't they they, they don't get touched as as much as I do. Why am I getting touched?" Yeah. So yeah, I respect the comment. I think they should they should invest in more protection, and it's gonna be interesting what they do because Pete Carroll still has a lot of fire, man. That's a good, that's a solid team. They have DK Metcalf, they had TJ Dockett. Um, if they would get a, I think maybe a, a more consistent number one running back. And a better offensive lineman because you got Michael Potty, do you have Dwayne Brown? Yes, big veterans, big bodies. When they're there, they're efficient. But when they're they're not there half the time. That's the thing. You have to have yeah. that consistency, and and you have to find the right mix of, of offensive line players. So, yeah, man, I I, I was surprised. I, I I had I saw a tweet, but uh, I didn't really pay attention. Now that you mentioned it, it, it makes a lot of sense, man. You're if you want to compete, you know. Hey, for you, for you and the Cardinals, it'd be great if he yeah, but, got traded. But look at, but look at the running quarterbacks. Look at the running quarterbacks. Cam Newton. They, they don't last long. They they get hit so much. Uh, I mean, Mahomes is going to be the same way. They're talking about him being the next Brady, but he's getting hit, and, and, and Brady don't get hit. So I, I don't know what happened to Brady this year, this year, guys. But every every quarterback sack he took, it was like he was sliding, dude. He was he was avoiding the yeah. contact. I don't know when he turned that switch on. But it was it was it was amazing to watch this dude kind of okay. I'm gonna take a sack. I'm gonna go down quick, like really quick, like Kyler Murray quick. Like that's how that's how quick he was. Uh, so yeah, it, it's part of the strategy, man. You don't you don't risk your your body. Hopefully he gets that. If he gets that, I mean the division is gonna be tough, man. The Rams have a new quarterback. They they, they have a a strong promise in in getting the you know because they already get to the playoffs anyway. So you know maybe Matthew Stafford is that that piece. Then you have. You know Kingsbury and Murray on this side in the desert, trying to push every single one in in uh, in the division. Then you have you know the Niners. What are they going to do with Garoppolo and and are those guys coming back? Because they were the, I mean they were hospital this year. This <laughs> other yes. dude, it was a mass unit. Yeah, it was a mass unit. And then you have you have Russell, who's always you know starts off strong and then kind of the injuries get to his low line and and then his defense. At, I like the way the defense finished at the end. They were, they showed promise, man. Carlos Dunlop. And you know Ken Norton Jr. kind of tweaking pieces and Jamal uh, in the in, in in the safety position just doing his thing. I mean, this NFC West will be headlining next year again. I, I think uh, there should be a great competition, and I look forward to calling some games. Well, yeah, you, you're, but Rolando's right. He's uh, they're missing like beast mode. He's missing a running back. Like when he had beast mode, it was they were dangerous. 
Yeah, solid. Yeah, yeah well, well, Carson gets hurt a lot too. You know, but if if, if uh, Ciara, if, if Russell Wilson's Wilson's wife has anything Ciara. to do with it, what 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 did you say? She wants to go to Miami, right, or New York, or L.A. Well, L.A. is taken. There's nobody that that that's going to be a quarterback in the L.A. Jets. Go to Jets. So he he could go to the Jets, send, but if send. not, hey. Send him to my Dolphins. He Why might not? The, he might go to the Jets because Sam Send Darnold. Him to my went, Dolphins. Sam Darnold went to USC, and Pete Carroll's a USC old school coach. You never know, maybe. You know. Ah, uh, I, I would. Hey, I'd rather. I'd rather take him in Miami. That quarterback carousel is going to be interesting, man. Deshaun Watson. Also, what's he going to do? He, I mean, he seems bitter right now. Everything, every report on social media is like this guy wants out. But to be honest with you, I mean, would you trade? Would you be willing to trade Deshaun? I mean, he's a great quarterback. I think he's he just needs he needs the a D hop again. He needs that core to kind of you know run it. Yeah, Will Fuller's not going to be, uh, you know, he's not up to the standards of well, a, a lot of free agents up there, man. Fitzpatrick, Cam. I mean, what are you going to are you going to resign uh, Jameis Winston in in you know the contract and with the Saints? Um, Mitch Trubisky are you, and Nick Foles. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna pick one or the other? Are you gonna trade? I mean, Carson Wentz wants wants out. Oh yeah, I, I don't care what you say. I wouldn't give up two number ones for Carson Wentz. There's no way this guy has proven he had one good season. He After has, that, he's I mean, been hurt. If he There's goes, no way I give up if two he ones. Goes to Indy. Indy has one of the best offensive lines there is in the business, dude. I think that'll be a. I, if I was a quarterback. I would I would push for that. Put me the put me with the big guys, dude. Put me with the young dudes. Put me with the young bucks that want to protect me, dude. Carson, if he has protection, he's he's gonna make it. He's gonna put this team in the playoffs. You know that's yeah. Ryan. It's Ryan Tannehill, dude. That's it. Tennessee, yeah, that's the division Tannehill. right there. Yeah. I mean, really, you can't beat out Ryan Tannehill and get into the playoffs. That's, but, that's, but that's I, I like Frank Wright, man. I I think he's got something good good going there in Indy, and and if he gets you know the car center, the quarterback piece element to it, he's gonna be up there. Yeah, I mean Ryan Tannehill left Miami. Look what he did with the Titans. Right system, right coach. Good. Yeah, it's got to fit. 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 That's why Jared Goff, by you know, he had to go. They, 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 they did him that. dirty, Angel. No, they didn't do him dirty. Nah. We don't. He don't care. Nah, he's he a he's a forty nine er. He's a giant. He's a forty nine er guy. Anyway, he's a <laughs> San Francisco guy. You can't you can't be an L A Rams and going to a Giants game. We're the Giant. Like what do you? Oh, he's just. And he we're another him. Nimodo. Yeah, Nimodo. Now he's we're in like, Detroit. Peace out. Good luck That's with right. the snow. Deal with the snow for now on. Deal with the Ford family over there. Have fun. Uh, but no, nah, we're excited. The, the, I can't wait for football to start. We we'll see what Stafford does. I heard he bought a house right next to down the street over here uh, next to uh, Kershaw. Is uh, one of his uh, his oh, compadre. We got, boys, we, gotta get, man. we gotta get Rolly to come over here and barbecue for him. Oh, Rolly, you gotta come. I, I I have a green egg. I don't know how to work it. Oh, you, bro, I'm 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 with your competition. I'm a Camaro Joe. I'm the I'm the red el huevo rojo. But I can do your the the green egg facil. We can do. I don't even know how to use it. I, I just use the other barbecue, the carne asada. No, keep it simple. Man, dude, if you use one of those ceramic uh, grills. That green yeah. egg, yeah. You're, you're never going back to the gas or to any other type of grill, dude. That's you got the top of the line right there. You just got to smoke, smoke it, right? Smoke, smoke them. Smoke, sear, reverse, indirect. Nobody can even do pizzas in that thing, dude. Yeah, I know. We got to fire it up, Jaime. We got well, to fire it up. Meet you on Friday. That's right. Yeah, let's do it. Well, cool, Rolly. I appreciate you being on the show with us today, man. This is awesome, man. We, we you know, we'll... let's chat again, fellows. Thank you very much. Absolutely. The invite. You know, it, it was it was hard during the season to get on board, but uh, congratulations on, on on the show and um, let's let's talk again in the offseason and see what's going on. Absolutely. Absolutely, you know, whenever whenever we got you know some big, you know, we'll we'll dial you up and and uh, bring you over. Thanks thanks a lot for being with us again. Or, or if you want to talk siempre. Diamondbacks and Dodgers, you know, we can talk. Uh, we can do that too. Yeah, we can yeah. do that too. <laughs> well, I'm a big baseball guy, dude. I we, I, I I go to the Diamondbacks <laughs> games a lot. Your your guys over here, the Dodger fans, que pasó, Angel? <laughs> hey, they're all moving over yeah, there. I mean, rowdy, all those, bro. I mean, everybody. Hey, those are the Raider fans, bro, not the Rams fans. We're classy. <laughs> We're classy. We're classy. <laughs> Had to throw them Raider fans under the bus. <laughs> they're jumping in the pool and everything over there, right? <laughs> they do that, man. It's dangerous sometimes. <laughs> they know, thank you, Rolly. Thank you so much, man. We appreciate it. Saludos. Un abrazo. Saludos. Saludos. Thank you. Thank Take you care, so brother. much, man. Take care. All right.
Bueno, that that was uh, that was fun. That was a lot of fun with with Rolly. Uh, he's a great guy. Trust me, you 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 guys are gonna like uh, whenever he comes down and, and he barbecues. Well, oh, he can he can take over my barbecue. Me. You, don't, he you wants. don't understand. You don't understand. Yeah. He even makes like desserts uh, on, on the, the grill. grill. On the grill, oh, he, he he's a, he's incredible. He really is incredible. I mean. They say the offensive line man in football are the smartest guys. So well, they, he's a he's a talent beyond talent, you know. So uh, this is awesome. I mean, what a great show! We talked to Super Bowl. Uh, I know we wanted to uh, talk about a, a couple things. Um, Marty Schonheimer passed away. Yeah, one of legendary coaches at at an old old age. Uh, but uh, one of the someone who passed away was kind of a shock. Was Pedro Gomez, who's someone you work with? Yeah, and, I, uh, I was actually getting ready for uh, our Super Bowl post show. When I got on Twitter and when I read that, I, I literally froze. I, I couldn't believe it. Um, you know, I, I didn't know what had happened. Um, nobody really knows the, the exact cost. Uh, but Pedro was one of the good guys. He was really a nice guy. Um, he went to the University of Miami. Yeah, I saw that. Um, yeah. You have a lot and, of connections. And I, and I, and I, bonded, of- I bonded with him. I, I worked with him for several years at ESPN, you know, covering... Uh, baseball postseason and so you know sometimes you've got long days sometimes they're not that long but no matter what you know Pedro always he did a great job you know getting the interviews asking the tough questions uh, conveying the story Um, you know probably one of the hardest jobs and I told him this straight out he covered Barry Bonds for the better part of three years that was his daily assignment to cover Barry Bonds uh, because of the Balco situation. Then, you know, the home run chase. Um, and that was hard because obviously Barry Bonds, you know, not the nicest guy. He was an actual jerk who, you know, didn't really want to talk. So being on that beat day in and day out, you know, you've got to be somebody special. Um, and Pedro was truly a nice guy. He would always help out anybody. You know, when I started, covering baseball he helped me out as well we we bonded because of the latino thing uh because of the university of miami uh he was he was a great guy uh a better person father husband than he was a pro and he was top notch at that um you, you know we used to go out and have drinks beers after you know a long day um and he used to you know see me come in and he'd be like, hey, Jaime's here. So drinks on the portes. <laughs> uh, so wherever you are, my friend, drinks on the portes. Yeah, man. Uh, such a tragic loss, man. Uh, you're so young. Jesus. Yeah, 58 years old. Our thoughts and prayers with his family. I mean, rest in peace, Pedro. And, uh, you know, just you never know, man. It puts life in perspective. Even uh, they're talking about Kobe Bryant today. Uh, the, they came out with the NTSB. That's right. How it was pilot error. You know, these guys are so young and so much so more life. and. But yeah, thoughts and prayers. I know his son's in on in the Boston Red Sox organization. Yeah, Rio Rio is a pitcher in the in the Red Sox organization. And I uh, hope he does does well and and represents. So um, well, you know, we wanted to touch base on that. Um, also, um, we did a giveaway was last week on Wednesday, and uh, we we because of the YouTube's uh, our subscribers on YouTube they're private. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually give away. Uh, we're gonna do it through Instagram. Okay. And uh, as people share this episode post. For, for this week so this episode episode post if you share it we're gonna take the people that shared it and we're gonna put them in, in the list of oh cool of giveaway so we got some some stuff in jimmy got his shirt i finally uh, got my my you know my shirt that i get to wear the next time yeah you wear it to the gym <laughs> i'll wear it wherever <laughs> right the gym's not open right no gym's not open that's what that's what i say <laughs> But, uh, you know, that's our show today. You know, it was Super Bowl week. We've got a lot of great things happening. We've been talking football. I mean, uh, off-season football stuff. we got baseball. we got a lot of baseball stuff. we got a about. lot of baseball. Trevor Bauer coming to the that, Dodgers. That, that's right. You know, we got, uh, you know, basketball, big season. I mean, we're almost done with the first half of the season. You know, That's so, right. So, and March that, Madness is coming March up. March Madness. I mean, golf. we got a lot of golf coming up. Uh, there's so much coming up. Soccer. we got a lot of soccer. we got a lot of soccer coming up just, as well. As a matter of fact, on Thursday, uh, Tigres of uh, uh, Monterrey, uh, Nuevo León, La Universidad de, Mont- de Nuevo León, Tigres is, is in the final of the uh, World Cup Club, uh, I guess, championship, the, the Club World Championship 
um, out in uh, in Qatar, and they're playing uh, Bayern Munich. Oh. So yeah, that that game's on Fox Deportes That's on cool. on Thursday, uh, one o'clock Eastern, I believe, uh, ten Pacific. So if you guys want to uh, tune in, great game. Oh yeah, think it is. They got a good following down there in Mexico, man. Every time I go down there, I see it is everywhere. But um, that's awesome. I also learned that planes don't fly over Messi's house. That's the way it goes in Spain. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. He's in a special place. Oh, well, so. he could probably buy that airspace <laughs> with that contract that he signed over $500 million for four years. Yeah. 550 something million. Just, no, not dollars. Just move Euros. Exactly. You know, it's blocked off. <laughs> That oh, airspace is blocked off. Man. Yeah, what a, what, a, what a great contract. So, But that's our show for today. That's our show. Jimmy, any last thoughts? Anything good? Uh, no, we, you know, thanks again to Rolly Cantu for being here with us. Um, you know, hopefully we get to visit him soon as well. You know, once things start opening up again, yeah. we'll have him again on the show. And a big shout out to, uh, to Pedro Gomez. You know, I usually wear the Miami stuff. Because I'm an alum, you know, whatever. But I wore it today because of Pedro, too. So, hey, shout out to Pedro. Pedro.